There are a lot of interesting games and puzzles at which you can look mathematically. And more often than not, you can gain a lot of insight into the given game, whether that's some good or interesting strategies, or maybe some interesting facts about things like how many possible games there are. Today we will take a look at a classic example of a newspaper game, Sudoku. For those of you who don't know, Sudoku is a puzzle game where you are traditionally given a 9 by 9 grid. Some of the cells in the grid are filled with digits 1 through 9, and your goal is to fill the rest of the cells such that there are no repeating digits in each of the rows, columns, and highlighted 3 by 3 blocks. The game might feel very simple, and that's because it is, but don't let the simple rules deceive you. It can be quite challenging to solve some of the harder ones. Before we start looking into some mathematical tools that might help us find solutions, first let's maybe look at some classical combinatorial properties that each puzzle might have. Let's start by taking a look at the total number of possible solved grids. Using some logic and computation, we arrived at over 6 sextillion possible solutions. Though most of them will not be very different from each other. If we look at the possible symmetries and equivalence classes of solutions, we reach around 5 billion essentially different solutions. Another question you might ask is what is the minimum number of initial clues that ensures a solution? The answer is 17. Here's one such Sudoku. Now we will look at a way of representing the puzzle mathematically. We will construct a so-called Sudoku graph where each vertex represents a Sudoku cell and edges connect pairs of the cells that are in the same column, row or block. In an n by n Sudoku, each of the columns, rows and blocks form a so-called clique of size n, a clique being a subset of adjacent vertices. We can think of the solution to a Sudoku as a graph coloring problem, where a valid solution is a coloring such that no two vertices in one clique have the same color. In the case of unsolved Sudoku, only some of the vertices will be colored. That corresponds to the initial clue. Now the problem of solving Sudoku corresponds to a pre-coloring extension problem on this graph. That is, given a finite set of colors and a partially colored graph, can you extend the coloring to the whole graph? It is a very much open problem, and there is a lot of re interesting research that goes into developing algorithms to solve this problem. In any case, I hope that I was able to shed some light on an interesting piece of math that is relevant to any puzzle lover. If you want to learn more, I highly recommend taking Sudoku seriously, the math behind the world's most popular pencil puzzle by Jason Rosenhaus. Here are also some good resources. Thank you.